We've come to see our dad here at the Environmental Ergonomics Lab. Here at Brock, he's called Dr. Freeze, and we're called his Freezies. So we'll go in and look at what he's got going on in his lab. Hey guys, welcome to the lab. Nice to have Hi. you here. So you've come to see what we do in the environmental ergonomics lab? Can I answer some of our questions? Sure, would love to. What questions do you have? What goes on here at the environmental ergonomics lab? Quite a bit. What we really try to look at here is what happens to the human body when we are in very hot or very cold environments. So how do we control our temperature? What keeps us warm when it's cold outside? What keeps us cool when it's hot outside? And how does that affect how we work can we run as fast when exercise and play is hard when it is very hot outside? Uh, that's one of the questions that we try to ask. And also, what happens if we are in very cold conditions? If we get fall into cold water, what are easy ways, the safest ways to get out safely and uh, rescue people? What kind of tests have you done to learn about how this stuff works? Well, we do all different kind of tests. It depends on what questions we want to answer. So some days we'll have the chamber, our heat chamber, set up to very hot temperatures and we will have people exercising in there. We might test how their muscles work, how well their hearts work, how well they can sweat. And uh, another day we might have our immersion tank behind us. We might have that set up to very cold temperatures and be testing survival suits say what the uh, fishermen might be wearing out in the North Atlantic or what the uh, search and rescue people might have to wear when they're out in the cold. What courses do you teach in university? I teach a course for third year students. It's called Cardiorespiratory Physiology and Environmental Physiology. So the cardio is how your heart works, respiratory is how your lungs work during exercise, and then I put it all together and how it works in different environments. How did you get involved in this field of research? I wanted to study the humans and during exercise and I didn't really know much beyond that about what I wanted to do but I got involved uh, in my lab during my graduate studies which is what you do after your first degree in university and I got involved in studying scuba divers and studying why is it they seem to get cold when they are diving in, in cold waters. Is it just the cold water itself or is it something more than that? So we studied scuba divers and because of that I got really interested in how the human body works in different environments. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics, if you look at the uh, Greek term, it is the study of work. It is the how humans work in different environments. So not only am I interested in studying how the body functions in different environments, but also how does it actually work? So how does it interact with machines, whether it is a helicopter pilot that may be flying a helicopter? How does, how does the cold or how does the heat affect how they can work in that particular environment? How does heat and cold affect how we can exercise? Well, it actually does a lot to how we can exercise. And when it's very hot out, we end up sweating a lot more, and that l helps us, causes us to lose water from our bodies, so we have less blood, because that's where the sweat is coming from, is from our bloodstream. So we have less blood, and that means we have less blood going to our muscles. So because of that, we can't exercise as hard as when we are in a cooler environment. What are some of the toys you play with in your lab? Oh, we have a lot of toys in this lab and that's what's fun about it. We play with a lot of different equipment. First of all, we're gonna show you the uh, different chamber that we have to control temperature and also the immersion tank that we see standing behind us. But on top of that, we have lots of ways to measure how your body responds to those environments. What is this goofy looking gadget you've got right here? 
Well, what this is, is the controller for our environmental chamber, and it's really unique. It's actually the one of a kind in North America because not only can I control temperature, I can control it over a very wide range from minus 30 degrees. So I know we've gone snowboarding in very cold weather, but this is even colder. And we can do that. We can also go all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than what it is in the Saharan desert. So what will we be putting on Zach? Well, we are going to have him run in our heat chamber today. So one of the things, because it's hot, we want to measure how hot he gets. So the things we'll be putting on him today are sensors for the skin to tell us how hot different parts of his skin is going to be. So we have here what's called a data logger, which, which records the skin temperature, and it's going to be feeding us into the, uh, the computer, and we can see it out there. All right, you're all wired. We see your temperatures look good. Now let's see what happens when we take you in to the chamber. So once you start running, as you keep exercising, probably the first thing you'll notice is that you're gonna start to sweat and that's your body's natural response to it being hot or to you exercising. But when you are a firefighter, when you are wearing very thick or very heavy clothing, you have a bigger challenge because you can be sweating a lot, but the problem is that sweat isn't getting out into the environment because the clothing is blocking it. I think you've done great. So let's take a little break and see what other things we can do. Jacob, so we are going to have you go into our dunk tank over there and see what it's like in cold water. Yep. You ready for that? Okay, so we're first we're going to put the uh, skin temperature sensors on you. So Zachary, can I get some tape please? Great, Jacob, you're all wired up, so we're going to get you to move over onto our sling and harness. Okay, and into the water we go. <laughs> and we're almost all in. Okay, you ready to come back out? Okay, Zachary. And over we go. What advice would you give to students who want to study in this field? Well, the first advice I would give is really get interested in how your body works and study science. Biology is a big part of what we do, but all of the different sciences are very important, from math that we use sometimes, to physics, to even understanding chemistry, because sometimes we look at food and how that affects the way we perform. I would study physics, I would study chemistry, understand math, and really understand and get interested in asking questions because that's the biggest job of a scientist is to understand things and to understand things we need to ask good questions and so the biggest skill we can have is to keep our curiosity going and always be wondering about the world so guys did you have fun today in the environmental ergonomics lab yep yeah are there any other tests or things that you want to do while you're here dunk you dunk me of course <laughs> who wouldn't Oh, no. OK, but one condition. We're going to try out one of these survival suits. OK. Could you tell us about that suit they're going to try on? Sure. What this suit is, it's called an immersion suit or a survival suit. And it is what's used by, for example, people working in the offshore oil rigs, say, off of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. They have this as an emergency for if accidents happen and they need to get off of the oil rigs very quickly and they may be in the water. So they would wear this. It is meant to go right over their clothes and be called a dry suit. So hopefully what we'll, it will do is keep you and all of your clothes dry and warm by having a pocket of air in between you and the water.
Okay guys, did you have fun here today in the environmental ergonomics lab? Yeah, great. Well, to say thank you for coming and seeing us today, I've got a special present for you. As you said at the start, they call me Dr. Freeze here, so I've got for you guys some giant freezies. All right. Yes, thank you guys for coming and keep curious and keep asking questions because that's what science is all about. <laughs>